cruising through a small town nestled in the mountains southwest of Cupertino, California, our Yamaha-led group was soaking in a perfect day of riding on the latest generation of their iconic triple-cylinder naked spore bike, the MT-09. Suddenly, I felt a sharp pinch on my right side. Turning to see what it was, I spotted four-time AMA road racing legend Josh Hayes beside me, laughing inside his helmet. As we slowed down entering the town, he had ridden up next to me and playfully goosed me, making me jump in my seat. When we stopped at the first sign in town, we pulled up side by side, flipped up our visors, and I joked, Josh, you're acting like we're old friends. We shared a laugh, fist bumped, and as we continued riding, I watched him sneak up on other riders, repeating his antics. It was hilarious. This set the tone for the rest of the media ride with moto journalists from around the country. We wound our way through the famous Redwood Forest of Northern California, riding along the stunning CA-1 with the awesome folks from Yamaha Motors USA and Alpine Stars US. Great company, breathtaking scenery, and amazing motorcycles and gear. It was the perfect day on the road. The MT-09 has been a cornerstone in Yamaha's hyper-naked lineup for a decade, alongside the MT-07 Twin, both hugely popular in the US market. A few years ago, we had the chance to test the powerful triple engine in their XSR 900 Sport Heritage model, and the Tracer 9 GT Plus impressed us so much that it earned our 2023 bike of the year. So when the invitation came to test this engine in its raw, naked Sport bike form, I couldn't say no. The MT-09 shares the same tuning and gearing as the XSR, though the clutch pack feels like it has slightly different springs compared to the Tracer. The 2024 model introduces a new generation with some key upgrades that distinguish it from previous versions. One of the big changes is in the transmission. It now features seven redesigned gears with a six drive dog setup, replacing the old five drive dog configuration. They also upgraded the third through sixth gears but kept the same ratio, resulting in smoother up and down shifts, less backlash, and shorter drive force cut times. Perfect for the gearheads out there. Another standout feature is the new third-gen quickshifter, which now allows downshifting during acceleration and upshifting during deceleration. I don't think the Tracer 9 GT Plus has this, and I already love the quickshifter on that bike. I tested it several times during our ride, and it's impressively smooth. Just wow. We set off from the hotel parking lot in the morning, riding through Cupertino city streets to get a sense of how the MT-09 handles as a commuter. Despite being a 900 cubic centimeters bike, it feels surprisingly light with effortless shifting both with and without the clutch. This is when I really noticed the difference in clutch feel compared to the Tracer. The clutch pull is slightly longer, but the engagement is even smoother, which I didn't think was possible after my experience with the Tracer 9. An interesting side story. We hadn't even left Cupertino when a local police officer pulled our group over. Apparently. One of the Yamaha staffers, who shall remain unnamed, popped a wheelie at a stoplight and got a good scolding from the officer. Luckily, after explaining our group's purpose, he was let off with just a warning, but we all agreed he wouldn't live that down anytime soon. Yamaha also made some tweaks to the MT-09's rider triangle compared to last year's model. The handlebar is now a bit lower, pulled back, and slightly reshaped. The foot pegs have been raised slightly higher and moved back, giving the bike a more forward-leaning stance. Despite this, I found the riding position very comfortable for my 5 feet 8 inches frame. And after a full day of riding, neither my wrists nor neck felt strained at all. We rolled out of town westward up into the twisty, curvy roads of the Santa Cruz Mountains toward Castle Rock and Big Basin State Parks, home to vast, massive redwood forests. These tree titans can reach over 200 foot tall and can live over 2,000 years. Raging fires swept through these redwood stands for hundreds of square miles back in 2020, and the evidence is still visible everywhere blackened tree trunks, burnt underbrush, and smaller torched and fallen trees scattered among the hillsides. Yet life was rapidly returning, with fresh flora sprouting about and the giant redwoods pushing skyward with new green growth. Standing among these living skyscrapers at a short rest stop was awe-inspiring. From beholding the sheer size of the redwoods, seeing beautiful flowers blossoming about, to finding a bright yellow endangered banana slug at the base of a colossal tree. Nature finds a way, 
The roads through the parks and mountains remind me of those in the southern Appalachians, with tight curves and switchbacks, alternating out onto wide, fast sweepers, all among the breathtaking giant redwoods. The new MT-09 Quickshifter Slash Slipper Clutch Setup made shifting virtually second nature over the miles of mountain passes. Using no lever clutching, save the occasional stop due to small communities or road work. So easy, just clicking up slash down through the gears as needed, without altering throttle input. As I stated, it's a next step even beyond the Tracer's excellent clutch system. I didn't try to hang with the Spore Bike Fast Boys at the front, just rode my own brisk but controlled pace, with another group behind me running their own pace as well. This afforded me a lot of time just riding the undulating tarmac by myself. No one in front I felt pressure to keep up with, no one behind pushing me along. Perfect to really get into the MT-09 and feel it, tap into its essence, mesh with the bike as man and machine. I found a rhythm with the MT up in the chilly, curvy elevations, and we danced across the mountains together. The Yamaha is so light and flickable, so effortless to shift up slash down, so smooth to lightly front slash rear brake as needed. I found myself in a flow state, perfectly dialed in with the bike and the dance over the miles and moments through the seemingly endless mountain curves. With intermittent stops to refresh and shoot some photos and footage, the entourage eventually arrived at the Pacific Ocean and turned south on the famed CA-1 Pacific Coast Highway. Abundant sunshine, stiffer breezes, colder temps blowing in off the waters, and the MT-09 group rolled to a locale for some seaside recording of each rider. Waiting my turn, I strolled up a grassy path to a rise giving me a glimpse of the mighty Pacific. Whitecaps pushed south and waves crashed against craggy shorelines below jagged cliffs, with a few brave surfers in wet suits making their way down and back along the narrow path to water's edge. I just stood there in wonder until it was time to remount for my video slash photo run. Then we all rode further south for Santa Cruz. The MT-09 is a very comfortable mount for my size and riding style, and I never really felt a bothersome level of wind buffet without a fairing. Rolling into the seaside town of Santa Cruz on the northern point of Monterey Bay, we negotiated traffic to the municipal wharf, riding out to the inn for a seafood feast at Stag Narrow Brothers Restaurant. Their fried calamari and popcorn octopus, yes, you read that right, are surprisingly delicious. After a hearty seafood feast, we remounted and rolled out of town back into the Santa Cruz mountain range. Hopping on CA 17 North, 